Hi, I'm Scott Trauger. This is my Your Question, Your Mark video. My question is, why are there so many cancer cases today? Is it our modern technology that's causing it, or our modern technology that's finding it? Enjoy the video. Why are there so many cancer cases today? Is it our modern technology that's causing it, or our modern technology that's finding it? Hmm. In 1986, there were about 50,000 known primary brain tumors in the U.S. In 2008, there were about 600,000. A lot of increases in cancer are from the advents of technology to detect cancer. The fMRI was invented in 1990, which could account for the increase in brain tumors. Lung cancer used to be primarily detected by CAT scans, but in the recent decades, specific blood tests have been discovered to detect lung cancer. X-rays are also a new invention in the past century that have been detecting more cancer as X-ray technology gets better. Scientists have proven that cell phone radiation can cause cancer cells to grow faster than normal. Even cell phone companies advise consumers to not point cell phone antennas toward exposed parts of your body. Studies have shown that 6 to 11 percent of lung cancer cases are caused from car emissions. Chlorine is one of the leading causes of breast cancer. Household bleaches can contain up to 10 percent of active chlorine. Over 110 pesticides are used on apples alone. Pesticides have been proven to cause cancer. I thought it would be a good idea to get a professional's opinion on what they thought about the answer to my question. So, to find out, I asked a real doctor about what he thought. Here's an interview with Dr. Peter Pickens, an oncologist at Abington Memorial Hospital. Well, my name is Peter Vincent Pickens. I'm an MD. I'm a senior physician at Abington Memorial Hospital and I'm a um, clinical professor of medicine at the Temple University School of Medicine. Yeah, as I'm sure you know, almost all kinds of cancers have been increasing in numbers for almost as far back as we've been able to tell. And my question is, why do you think there are so many cancer cases today? Do you think it is our modern technology that's causing it or our modern technology that's finding it? Right. Well, Scott, the key thing is that all scientific inquiry starts with hypothesis. And you generated two hypotheses. One is that modern technology is creating cancer. And the other hypothesis is that modern technology through better diagnostic tests is detecting cancer. So which one could it be? So really, we have two hypotheses, and both of which may be correct, depending upon which cancer you think about. Uh, really, all cancers are very different. You know, there's probably 1,000 different human cancers, and the etiology or cause of these cancers can be entirely different one from another. So for example, the first hypothesis is that modern technology is creating a certain kind of cancer. Well, if you look at all the human cancers, the one that stands out uh, in my mind would be, for example, malignant lymphoma. If you looked at malignant lymphoma, uh, the incidence defined as number of cases per 100,000 of population has increased by a factor of threefold since 1970. And that's occurring basically in all age groups in Caucasian Americans and African Americans, uh, in almost any epidemiologic group you look at, the incidence of lymphoma has increased dramatically since 1970. Now, why would that occur? Well, epidemiologists link the incidence of malignant lymphoma to pesticides and insecticides. Now, people who are exposed to insecticides and pesticides, uh, for example, farmers have a higher incidence of lymphoma. So if you look at the incidence of lymphoma in Lancaster County, it's much higher than Montgomery County, which is good news for us. The good news about insecticides and pesticides is it makes foodstuffs inherently safer for us because it eliminates pathogens. The downside is that people who are applying the pesticides and insecticides to make food safer for us 
may be making the world less safe for them. So some of the incidents of lymphoma has been linked to insecticides and pesticides, which of course the development of which is a product of modern technology. So in a sense, technology might be creating some form of cancer, i.e. lymphoma. But then if you look at the other side of the coin, the other hypothesis is that modern technology, because of better diagnostic tests, enables us to find cancers more reliably. And there's many examples of that. Um, for example, colonoscopy in picking up colon cancer early in a curable stage. Uh, annual mammography among women to pick up breast cancer in early stage. But probably the best example of that is the annual blood test called a PSA, which is applied to all men annually at the age of 50. Now, that enables us to pick up prostate cancers early. So if you look at the incidence of prostate cancer as a function of decades since 1950, from about 1950 through about the late 1980s when the test became available, prostate cancer increased only slightly from decade to decade. Then suddenly, you know, as we've seen, there's this huge blip in the early 1990s representing diagnostic bias of picking up prostate cancers that are small and may not be at all biologically meaningful, but they count as someone who is detected. So we're increasing detection, which increases the number of people diagnosed with that disease. But the key thing is, the people being diagnosed tend to be older, have more biologically indole disease, and in fact, that particular prostate cancer in these elderly men may never have been a problem in their lifetime. So actually, the, you generated two very interesting hypotheses, and they are both correct. There might not ever be an answer to this question, but I think if there ever will be, it will be in the future, comparing the present then to the past then, which would be the present now. This would probably give us the best chance in finding an answer to this question because currently we have the technology to find cancer and find cancer causes, and this is what we would compare to in the future. If cancer cases keep increasing as they have been, but our modern technology to find the cancer doesn't increase as rapidly as our carcinogens do, you can infer that it's our modern technology that's causing the cancer. But this could also work in the opposite way. Like if our cancer cases keep increasing, and our modern technology that's finding it increases faster than our carcinogens do, you can say that it's our modern technology that's finding the cancer. But the future might just yield the same answer we have now of what's causing the cancer. Because if everything keeps increasing, you'd have the same dilemma now of what's causing it. Now, back a couple hundred years ago, there wasn't the technology to find or even know cancer existed. People would die and the blames would be simply put on spiritual things or sickness. So there's no way of knowing how many cancer cases there actually were back then. As technology both helpful and harmful increased, so did the amount of cancer cases, and this is where my question comes from. It took me a really long time to think of a good question for the scholarship. I first heard about the scholarship, and I started thinking of questions right away that couldn't be answered easily or at all. And I was having a hard time thinking of a question, and then I realized that I was thinking way too much into it. And the question that finally came to me was because it's a question that's from a topic that is very close to my heart. Because just this past year, my dad passed away from multiple myeloma, which is a rare form of bone cancer that affects your blood. He was diagnosed with it in 2001 when I was eight years old, when he broke seven bones in his spine. Uh, he battled eight years with the cancer, and it took over and won just this past year. As you can imagine, I was and still am greatly affected by what cancer has done to my family, and this is a major factor in my decision on why I chose this question, but it's not the only reason. I also think that it's a good question because it's an unanswered question in this world that not only me, but I think everyone would like to know the answer to this question. Another reason is because cancer runs in my family genes, and it's not that I'm scared of getting cancer, but if an answer can be found to this question, then we're just one step closer to finding a cure to cancer. If I had the opportunity to search for an answer to this question, I would probably go straight to the source. The best place that I could think of for this would be the American Cancer Society in Atlanta, Georgia. I think that if any place in the world would have an answer to this question, it would probably be this place. Another thing that I'd want to do would be to meet with one of the country's leading oncologists to get his insight on the answer or to maybe determine if there even is an answer to this question. Now, while there may not be an answer to this question, a journey to find the answer or even to gain more information would mean a lot to me, considering what cancer has done in my life.